Welcome to Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. I'm your host, James McCormick. The purpose of this show is to bring together veterans, history, and the love of relic hunting to tell the story of those who served long ago. This show will tell the history of West Virginia while taking our veterans out to locate those precious artifacts that need to be found and preserved. Digging History will bring together technology, as in metal detectors, maps, stories, and West Virginia citizens who will allow us access to the property needed to make these discoveries and allow all citizens to see, and in some cases, touch items that are in many cases older than our statehood. The veterans we work with on this, these projects will also have an opportunity to tell their own story and in the course of these expeditions, find some therapeutic value of the experience and the fellowship that these adventures provide. Today, we will be going back to Scary Creek in Putnam County, the site of the first Confederate land victory of the Civil War and the kickoff of the Kanawha Valley Campaign that blazed a trail all the way to Golly Bridge and beyond. The four-hour battle plus killed 14 Union soldiers and wounded 30, while the Confederates lost four and had six wounded. One famous World War II general, George Patton, had a grandfather at this battle. Then Lieutenant Colonel George S. Patton, serving as the commander of the 22nd Infantry, who was seriously wounded at this fight and later killed in 1864 in Winchester, Virginia. This battlefield is mostly overgrown with urban and commercial development, but we did manage to dig up a little history and tell a little bit more about this battle. So enjoy part two on the Battle of Scary Creek with Digging History. We hope you enjoy it. Okay, so we searched on the uh, opposite side of Scary Creek where the Union positions were at, and now we're over in a position where the Confederate artillery was at. So as you can see, a lot of things have overgrown here. This is a lot of the terrain has changed and Larry and Rich are up there right now looking around. We hope to find maybe some cannonballs or something like that in this area to establish the fact that this was the main gun emplacement for the Confederate artillery during the Battle of Scary Creek. So stick, stick with us, keep up with us and uh, let's get to digging. James McCormick here with Digging History, and we were uh, metal detecting out here at Scary Creek, and we ran in to a fellow Iraq a war veteran, and his name is Mike. And Mike owns this property, and uh, he's given us permission. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike, I wanna thank you for giving us permission to come out know. here. And uh, we'd love to have your kids and you kind of join us and and give us a chance to show them about how the machines work and talk a little bit about history? Sure, absolutely. Okay, guys, you ready to learn? <laughs> yep, definitely right there. See, he's not chubby. Okay, let's see. Uh, you think it's right here? Yep. I can't wait to get mine. <laughs> let's see if we can yeah, find it. Yeah, that's a huge piece. Now, take it and go over it with that metal detector. Okay, there it is. It's down in there. All right. All right. Let's see what you found. I bet it's a musket ball. What do you want to bet? Almost. Oh, maybe. He found something really cool, Rich. Now, just you got to just make sure that when you dig holes, that you fill them back in. It's in here. Here, watch this. Yeah, check it. That's up here. Uh, could I have it when I it? Here it is, right there. Can I have it whatever it is? Yeah, it's a nail. Look at that. That right there. Okay, so around here, everything, everything was put together with square nails. So the army would carry around tons of these. I don't even. I think this was dropped. I don't even think this was used. Hey James. Yeah. What'd you find? I found your grenade. A grenade. Yeah. 
What the heck? <laughs> he found a grenade. No joke. Good find, Rich. He found a grenade. <laughs> it's a toy grenade, of course. It's plastic. We were having a little fun with that, so please don't think we're playing with live hand grenades. Right here it is. Tell me what it is again. Well, I'm not sure. It's a bucking ball, maybe a pistol ball. That does it. That's no, that's a pistol ball, man. That's what I thought. That's a thirty. Yeah, that's that's a thirty-six caliber. Yeah. That's like the one I found earlier. That's that's probably like the one I found earlier. That was fired over there. There was flesh and hair on this. What? Get out of town. <laughs> the part that everybody looks forward to. Oh, it is a, it's a bullet. <laughs> no, is it? No, it's not a bullet. I thought it was a bullet. No, it's just an old cap. But it looks like a three ring bullet though. Too light. I thought it was a smash bullet. I was wrong. <laughs> Did you find something, Rich? Yeah, let's see. Yep, you gonna help me on this? Are we gonna find it? Yeah, there's a rock. Yep, that's it. That's Ferris, but that's good. I'm getting it right in there, okay? Hold it. Yep, right there. Rich, you've got the bug now, buddy. Okay. Well done, okay. Uh. There's right a way to get it. It's deep down there. Yeah, it is. I can bring one of my help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, looky there. It's a nerd! Hey, it's a nerd. James! What'd you find? What? It's a nerd! Well, look one. what he found. What? It's a nerd one. You found a bullet? Yeah, musket. That's a 69 caliber musket bullet. All right. Wow. Fired during the Civil War. Wow. See how heavy that thing is. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Hey, imagine what the gun will be. I know. And then imagine somebody all those years ago <laughs> held that in their hand and they loaded it and they were probably very scared when they fired it. a fire button, fire bullet. Yep. That's a good one. Yep. There you go. Hey, we found some really cool stuff out there today. This I'm not sure of. Possibly. Yeah. It looks copper, it could be brass. When I first looked at it, I thought about um, something off of a musical instrument, maybe, a, uh, but I don't think it's a harmonica. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm just not sure. It could be not of the period. Then we started to uh, dig into some pieces of uh, brass that were deformed. Now, when I look at this, the more I look at this, the more I, I, you know, we thought it was maybe a deformed shotgun shell. But because it is the green tint, and it's either, I, I, the more I look at this, it almost looks like a button, a piece of a button that's been shot. It just, I can't get my mind off of that. There I don't is, know. Uh, look on that edge right there, there's some reading right on that edge, right? I'll be darned. It may be. How old are you? You can see that. I've seen it from there. Yeah, actually, there is a... Uh, I need glasses. <laughs> there is. There is. That is like a uh, some kind of a design. This very well could have been a button, because there were people that were shot and were killed up there. I mean, and this area that we found it in was up there where I think that they were doing a lot of the, um, the hospital work at. I'm just not sure. 
Well, you can tell from other buttons if they had that kind of... You look right down in there, there's some marks too, right down in the hollow. Almost like the crown on the Statue of Liberty, but it's just lines, you know what I mean? See, this, this, this actually could be the part of an Ohio button. It could be. So this may be a really cool find here, and we'll get it. You can take a look at it. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but if it is, then that would be. Well, it wouldn't make sense for an Ohio button shot on that side. It would probably be a Virginia know. militia button. It could be that. Too. Yeah. They took two of them prisoner. Yeah, well, um, Patton oh. was wounded up there. Yeah, I think for that's it. what that is. Yeah, if you mm -hmm. can check that writing out. Yeah. Well, you look at other buttons and, and, yeah. and figure out the the uh, dashes that are on there. Mm -hmm. But you get a loop, and you look down in there, you're going to see there's there's roundness in a line right there, and mm -hmm. then there's some lines out. That has got to be what that is. That's a button. I think it's a button. I think it's a button. I think it's a button that was shot. Um, and it very well could have been a Virginia militia button. So if that's the case, and we can get that cleaned up, that's a, a tremendous find, you know, out here. You, right. get, you get some magnification on it, you'll see a lot more. Hey. Yeah. It could have been Colonel Patton's. It think. really could have been Patton's <laughs> button. There it is. It really he could have, because he there. was shot up so bad up there, they said he almost yeah. died up there. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was crippled, you know. and. And if anybody was wearing a coat with a button on it, it would have been it would have been, would have been the officer shirt. Yeah. God almighty, yeah, I'm, I'm, I just, I can't see that being anything else. Mm hmm And that looks like a shield in there, doesn't it? I can just see some roundness, you know, in the design. Mm hmm But I think those lines on the tab down here is going to mean more to you. Yeah, I, I think, think that I'll that thing went all the way around like that. And it was flattened out, and 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 part of it's missing. You know, obviously, probably went into somebody. But you know, that's that's a button. I mean, I'm looking at it. The more I look at it, when you turn it from angle to angle, the design you can is see there. the roundness right there. Yeah. There. So, and mm -hmm. it's not one of these. And it's not a rifle round. It's not a jacket off a rifle round. It's got green in it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what that is. Hmm. And I bet you, wait a minute. I think that I found a piece of the shank down here. Hmm. Right there. Maybe. I'll get a brush. Where the get a shank brush. was. Yeah, the shank where the hole? shank was. Yeah. Yeah, the shank hole. Mm hmm. Well. well there we go. That's a piece of history from, right. and that's what we do, you know, yeah. and, and if we would have not done that, then that would have stayed in the ground and nobody would have ever seen it. Okay, and this, we believe, or I believe. You believe. Yes, is where they screwed a fuse in. So I think this is a piece of shrapnel from a cannonball, and I think okay. that um, this was a, a fused, piece of steel and I think when it exploded I because it's so rough on the outside mm -hmm. I can see I, I could see the outside just shattering okay. and you know when steel especially the the iron I'm sorry mm -hmm. not steel but yep. iron like the pig iron type that they it use apart yeah that's very possible that's mm -hmm. very possible my, right? my doubt of it is the fact that it's just not curved you yeah know, I'm, I'm looking for a, a curve in that in the there's a little curve. Well, the curve. Yeah, it could be, but yeah. Because if I remember, the, the, the fuse the hole in there it, is uh -huh. about that big around. If it is where the... Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, would, that would fit that time. Yeah. That would fit that, I think. Don't you? If that is where it's screwed in, the curve would be... Well, remember, like, it's a six no, pounder. Be a, yeah, well... It'd be like this. Right, right. But it, it would be about that big around, so you'd be... I would assume you would have it... Well, hold it. There you go. Hey, now look, you're the one with it. the good eyes. Yeah. Tell me. Right. <laughs> 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 we, we already well, made you know, I know they, I can't they, see. They, they screw. And, and I guess nice. it's, it's sitting here and all of us talk, because, you know, mm -hmm. we've all seen, we've all been to the river and seen the bear. Mm -hmm. And and now you think about the Civil War soldiers. 
you know, what their life was like, especially the one that was wearing this button, you know, how horrific that that, I mean, even on the scale of this being a small battle, you know, I, I mean, it, one life lost, you know, has a major impact. I think all of us can go back and think about somebody we've lost in our life that impacts us emotionally. Well, there's no small battle or small war if you're involved in it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's there's right. no such thing as low-intensity conflict. That's right. <laughs> if you're in the middle of the fight. Nope. Yeah. I just, I can't even, uh, I'm glad that we got to go out and do this today. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of relic hunters would look at this and say, well, you know, that's not a ton of stuff, but the stuff we found is significant. And what was really cool is, is that we know exactly where it was found. Mm -hmm. And there are parts of that battle that are yet to be told. Mm -hmm. Well, we hope you enjoyed that film footage from the field. Now, let's take a look at some of the artifacts that we found while we were out at Scary Creek. The first thing I'd like to show you folks is something that I think really sticks out as what really explains the veracity of battle, and that is this. This is a cannonball fragment most likely from a six pound cannon that was fired during the Battle of Scary Creek. And if you take a look at this wrought piece of iron that is rusty and imagine something like that in a round ball exploding over the heads of the soldiers. And just look at this, this happened, this happened before West Virginia even became a state. And imagine the fear and the terror that went over the eyes and the, and the minds of these people, unbelievable. Some of the other things that we found, which are equally cool, is also part of a cannon fragment, was this section right here. And this section right here doesn't look like much, but this is where the fuse screwed in to a cannonball. This is where the, the timing fuse or a plunger went in that caused the cannonball to explode, either when it hit the ground or in a timed explosion over the heads of the troops. I want to go over here and look at some of the musket balls that we found. Now, we found only round balls at this battle. We found some pistol shot and we found some 69 caliber round balls with a whole lot of buckshot. So that tells us that they fired primarily buck and ball during this battle. If you take a look at just one of these musket balls here, you know, you're talking one heavy piece of lead that was flying through the air. These are the weapons of warfare that were used at the Battle of Scary Creek. This is the kind of lead that was flying through the air. And all accounts from that battle stated that there was a tremendous amount of musketry and back and forth cannon fire. So for us to be able to find any of this after the battlefields have been almost nearly wiped out by, by urban sprawl and building and construction is just a miracle in itself. And if you take a look at some of these little balls, these are the buckshot that usually came with one of these um, one of these solid lead shots. So you'd have a solid lead ball, and then you'd have three of these little buck shots that went with it, thus the name buck and ball. We found some pistol rounds that were out there. This is a pretty common thing to find out on Civil War battlefields, so that tells us that the officers were firing, or, and this is a fired piece of lead, probably from a 36 caliber, a standard round that was used during the Civil War. And if we move over here, I want to show you the one piece of pottery that we found. Now, a lot of you are familiar with uh, the old crock pots and things. Well, during the Civil War, it was no different. They carried around their, their food and their water and things like this in these crock pots. And most likely, this was off of one of the supply trains. Um, another really cool artifact that we found was this square nail. Now, if you can get in there and look at that square nail, I want you to think about this, okay? This nail, for sure, is older than the state of West Virginia. And you can tell that it is old because number one, it's been hand forged. It's got the square head on the top. 
And these are antiques. These are really hard to find. And we found some very large uh, spikes that were made like this, most likely that were used to put together the few structures that were there that served as field hospitals during the battle. This buckle, which is an iron buckle, looks rather small. But these buckles would be found on haversacks uh, for the Civil War soldiers where they would carry their provisions uh, or a saddleback bag. A saddlebag um, is most likely what this came off of. Um, so that's another cool piece of history. Now this one I find it, uh, especially interesting and this is what they called a J-hook. Now when you look at this you think, well what is this used for? Now this J-hook was used right in this area right here. And I'm going to try not to hit my microphone there. But the J-hook was, um, was connected to the leather that actually pulled together the shoulder straps of the backpacks of the soldiers. Now, to find one of these, especially as old as the one that, we've, that we have found down here from 1861, is a real difficult thing to find. We did find a couple of federal buttons, which uh, I am going to show you uh, two of them uh, right here. And these have, been, um, yeah, these have been through the mill here. But if you look in real close, you can see the federal eagle. When you look in closer, you'll see that this is what they call a general service button. The general service means that, you know, probably a, a private that uh, was in the Ohio infantry most likely wore this. And the reason why you can tell it's general service is because it has the shield in the, in the middle. And it doesn't have an I or a C or an A, which is generally used to denote infantry, cavalry, and artillery. And that, I'm going to save the best for last. So I want to show you a couple more artifacts, and then we're going to go into the really cool thing that we found. Um, this, if you wonder what this is, this is a harmonica reed. And, you know, just like um, the soldiers of today, um, you know, soldiers then would carry around uh, little pieces of home with them. And this most likely was carried by some either Confederate, we found this on the Confederate side, so most likely it was a Confederate soldier, um, carried this from home and used it to play music late at night, maybe when they were at Camp Tomps, uh, Tompkins, which was just up the road from the battle. Uh, as they were preparing to go to battle. A couple of other artifacts that we found that we have not been able to identify yet is this one right here. Um, I am not sure, but I think that this may be from an old tin type uh, photo. So this may have been from a frame of a, photograph, uh, of a photograph that was taken back in the 1860s. And it was very common for the soldiers to carry around pictures and they were very expensive and very hard to get. Um, so they would carry them around and they were made with glass and many of the soldiers would carry them in their breast pocket to think of home and it's usually their sweetheart or their loved one and they were always in one of these metal frames. Uh, so that's a real good possibility. Now last, but most certainly not least, is this button right here. Now. When you take a close-up of this button, and I want to kind of spin this thing around a couple of times so that you can really get the full effect. Now, when you look at this, you think, how do you know that's a button? Well, upon closer examination, we determined and we found the outline of the Virginia State Militia uh, emblem. And what you will do is when you turn this thing around and look, you will also see the ridging, which was like a roped ridging. And the only button, the only button of that design that was out there was a Confederate officer, staff officer button. The location we found this at, and there you'll see a picture of one right there. And if you look at that button, and you look close at the one that we have, this button was obviously hit by something something very catastrophic, something very destructive. There was a lieutenant by the name of Lieutenant Welch that was with the Canal Artillery who was killed at the Battle of Scary Creek. We really believe that 
Upon closer examination of this button and the location that we found this at, which was very close to the location where he was killed, that this most likely was a button off of Lieutenant uh, James C. Welch's uniform. And the absolute mangledness of this button shows the horrific power that the weapons of warfare had at that time. I'd also like to uh, show you one of our custom t-shirts before we go any further. Now, when we're out here digging, we like to dig in style. So, I have created this really cool t-shirt that's called Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. This is the back of the t-shirt, and this is the front of the t-shirt. And if you look in there real close, you can see we've got the shovel, we've got the metal detector, and we've got the Purple Heart. I am a Purple Heart recipient, uh, a three-time Purple Heart recipient, and we do focus a lot on veterans. Now, if you're interested in one of these t-shirts, we do have them available. And all you have to do is contact me at my email address. That is james261968 at hotmail.com. Again, that's james261968 at hotmail.com. Or you can call or text me at area code 304-206-6065 to talk about how to get one of these awesome t-shirts. Now, folks, I want to thank you for watching Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. And I want to give a special thank you to the Putnam County Library for their support and access to books and historical articles that really helped us locate and bring history alive. Remember that some of the greatest adventures is just a short trip to your local library. And it's a tremendous resource that's free for us to use. In addition, we wish to thank Fisher Research Labs in Texas for providing us technical and material support to make this show a success. I wish to also, last but not least, thank all of the veterans out there. Thank you for your service and for all those that were involved in this show, Rich, Larry, and Mike. And we got a chance to learn some things about these folks and have some really cool times out there. I'd also like to thank Beth Garrigal, our producer, who took the time to help us create this show. Your service and assistance was truly invaluable. And lastly, to the Library Television Network, who brings this to you and allowed us the opportunity to take it on the road, we say thank you. Please be sure to catch us again next month as we have some really exciting, cool things that are coming up with Digging History. So, have an awesome day, folks, and remember that a day digging history beats a day on the couch, so get the digging.